Good day guys, welcome back. And today we're gonna to be fitting some of the uh, electrics. I think we're gonna start with the split charge kit, which I will open up and show you what's in it. We've got the fuse board. Um, I'm still waiting on the carpet lining, so I'm limited in what I can actually fit. I have got the leisure batteries. We're gonna be going with two, two batteries, which are 115 amp hours each. And I've got 200 watt of solar coming. More solar is generally better than your battery capacity, but it might, again, I'm building this one for me, so in my circumstance, this is gonna be sufficient for what I need just to trickle charge it up. So if I show you what comes in the box, and then I'll run you through what's what. So you got your conduit, which is obviously just to protect your cables. You've got a VSR, this is 140 amp VSR. It's dual sensing, so the solar will charge the leisure batteries, but once they reach, I think it's 13.5 volts, no, 13.3 volts, this will activate, close the contacts, and then it will also charge the van battery. We've got some 16 amp cable. These are ready-made leads, these are. I'll put a link in the description of where I got it from, so it's quite handy. And then these are just little sticky pads if you want to stick it onto the wall to put some zip ties through or whatever, some cable ties. You've got a pack of fuses, 100 amp fuses. You've got the fuse carriers, you've got two of them. You want one each end, one just after the starter battery and one just before your leisure battery. You've got some post terminals for the leisure battery. I'm going to need another set to link the second battery to that as well. Which I think I have actually got somewhere. And you've got your little connectors with um, some heat shrink. And then you have some screws, which I presume for them pads. And some sticky pads. You've got your earth cable. or should we say negative, because it's 12 volt. And then you've got um, a link lead, which will be for the fuse to go in between. And then you have some cable toys. And the fuse board that I've chose to go for, which I've used before, these are quite, quite good, these. Because the way these work is you've got, all your 12 volt fuses will go here. And then you've got a bus bar at the bottom here for all your negatives. And the benefit of that is that if any of these circuits go and the fuse pops, the little LED light comes on next to it so you know which one's gone. Although you get some stickers with it anyway, which you, you can label it up. So you get some of them with it anyway. Again, I'll put a link to this in the description. Um, but the way this would work is, once you take the cover off, you connect your positive to here. So this, this will come straight from your leisure battery to here and then you've got your negative down here. So this can either go to the chassis of the van or a good earth, which obviously must be sanded down and make good contact. Or that can also go to your leisure battery. And then all of your positives will come in here on that side. And then all your negatives will just attach in down here. When I'm wiring them up, what I like to do is try and keep them in some sort of order. So if you sort of label this as one, label that as one, and then two, three, so that the negatives correspond with the positive, so you know if you wanted to remove one of them, you know which which negative to remove. Right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, skip scene to the next bit because we're gonna, as you can see, got a bit of mess everywhere. So I'm gonna try and make a bit of room for me to maneuver around. And um, once we're under the van, and I'll show you where I'm gonna bring it in because my first traffic that I had, um, the batteries in front of the passenger seat there, and the first one I did, I brought under the mat on the top before my second Vivara realising that actually there's a, there's a much easier and better way to bring it in than that, which I'll show you now. So if we remove this cover, I'll take this out. The battery is under that. So there's two ways of doing this. 
you can either bring the cable from there underneath and in through that grommet there which is what I'm probably going to do and then bring the cable down and then I'm having my electrical system here um, the other way of doing it which a lot of people do it and I did it on my old van um, is to bring it underneath the van there and bring it down here underneath the van because there is actually um, small holes in the in the um, rafters um, as it comes down so then you can bring it here but it means drilling a hole in the van here and bringing it up which I don't really want to do um, I'd also rather the cable inside because if anything ever needs looking at I'd rather be inside to look at it than underneath the van so the less that's under the van for me the better really so I'm going to bring it across there through that grommet and down here and the kitchen will be hiding that grommet anyway so I'm not 100% fussed about that because it will be behind the kitchen units and then the bed will be here, it will be behind that which will be fixed to the wall. I can't fix it to the wall yet because again I still need to carpet and I am waiting for the carpet to come but then I will fix it to that which which will come down here because I'm going to have the whole electrical system here underneath the bed. So I'm going to be honest, that, that grommet and them grommets are actually um, for the bulkhead so they they're just threaded nuts effectively for the for the bulkhead which is odd because the other side of that there is actually a rubber grommet um but either way it's too small to fit my 16 amp cable as you can see i um drilled a new hole through that part of the bulkhead there and bought the cable down there this will all be fixed in neatly but obviously i need to get the carpet lined on first before i do that the reason I've done that is because I did bring it all under the van here, but down the back it was quite difficult to find somewhere I was happy with it coming through, so I, I decided to bring it through there. I've put the um, the conduit on going through the hole so that there's no chafing on the actual metal hole that I've drilled. And the other side of that, there is a rubber grommet, um, which I'll take you under the van and show okay, you. Okay, so as you can see, that's where the rubber grommet is. The cable comes through there, across there, zip tied it up there, and then it goes into the battery box there, so it's quite simple. And where the battery is, you've actually got quite um, good accessibility um, to outside. If you look there, so the cable will be quite easy to bring from there underneath the van. Looking a bit rusted, that is. Might have to have a little look at that. Okay, so the way that we put these together, it's quite a simple concept, really, because it's ready-made. So that's, that's all the, the good thing, really. So... We get the fuse. And then, the way it works is the fuse slots underneath them nuts. And that bolts underneath there the same for the other side, then that clips over the top of them. What I would suggest is that you don't put the fuses in until all the cable in, is in and you've got it to each battery and then put it in because it just saves the risk of, you know, if you've got the thread in, you've connected it. If you've got the fuse in, you've connected it to the battery and then you're threading this through the van and you hit any metal work, it's going to obviously spark and, and, you know, it's not good. So leave the fuses till last until it's all installed. Okay, so with the VSR, with this, you have one that says positive sensing battery in it and one that says secondary battery. So this will be the post from your, your van battery and this will be the post for your new leisure battery. They're very simple to fit. You have an earth lead coming out of it, which you need to fit to you know, a fairly decent earth. I'm, I'm gonna fit this on the wall here somewhere and I'm then I'm gonna wire this into the um, tie down point. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unbolt that, sand around it so we've got a nice contact to the actual metal of the body. And then probably join it in there. If I don't do that, then I'll probably drill a new hole and sand back where there's some of the metal. But this is that chipped, to be honest. A lot of it's probably already sanded back, but I'll update you in a minute when I've uh, got some of that installed. But I'd rather be 
just sort of safe to inform you. The cable that comes from the, the starter van battery, there is a fuse on that cable up by the van battery, as close to it as you can get it really. That, that then will protect this wire coming into the VSR, and then from the VSR coming out, there's another fuse here going down to, which will be the leisure battery. And the reason that you have this fuse here is for two reasons. One, you're gonna have power coming from that end on the leisure battery, even when the van is off. So that will protect this cable. And secondly, if something goes wrong with this and it's feeding, feeding electricity through this cable and anything happens here, it will also protect the rest of this cable going down to the battery. So that fuse has to be after the VSR and the other fuse on this cable goes up by the van battery. Well, what we're going to do here, I don't know if anyone's ever seen any of these before. Well, I know someone must have, but um, the earth I'm going to put to here, as you can see, I'll expose the metal around it. I've drilled an 11mm hole in there, and I've got one of these, which are really handy. This is the cheap version. You can get more expensive version, but it's, it's a rib nut tool. And then you get these, which is like, if you can make it out on the camera, it's got sort of ribs on got ribs on and you push that into the hole like that. I think what we might want to do is to make sure that's definitely flat because it's looking a bit like it's a bit there's a bit of metal sticking out there. And what you don't want to do with this is paint it because it's the earth so you want this exposed to the metal. One to hold it, like so, and then the other one to tighten this, like this. As I said, there is better versions of this. There's a, there's a sort of automatic tool that you can do it with, really, but I won't feel cheap and cheerful. So then you loosen this bolt and you have trouble doing it, then you have to undo that there. So we need
then undo the whole thing. You're left with a thread in the wall so that you can bolt. Put bolt into. So that can be your uh, your earth point. I need to just find a smaller bolt than this. This one's a bit long. Don't need it that long, do we? Right, so I found a more suitable bolt. Got a washer on it as well. So we should be able to get a nice earth there. And that'll bolt in like so. That'll bolt it and give it a nice cover area because of the washer. So, get the earth cables connected up. Some people prefer to solder these and it might be worth doing that. I'm not going to, but some people do. There we go, there's the first one. And this for the battery will be the second one. So. thinking about it I'm gonna do away with the washout because this already has quite a big surface area on it and it's awkward to do up with that on there so get rid of the washer we'll just put it straight in like that Solid earth connection. Right, so we'll go and start the van and we'll um, check that it works. Just bear in mind that the fuse is not in here. I've took this fuse out, so if th when this activates, the power will only come down to here and it will just stop here because there's no fuse there, so it's a broken link. Obviously, I'm not going to put the rest in until I get the rest of the electricity in because this is going to have to come back off anyway for the carpet, but this is just for the demonstration purposes of this video, really. So let me know if the light comes on. And there we go. You probably can't see the light from there. Just the jobby. Eh? 